2018. Bip, bip. <laughs> and we're back. Don't be mad in 2018. Somebody say something to get on your nerve or make you mad. Ow! Jump up and get glad. Don't yeah. let them make you mad. Yeah. Yeah. We the chocolate version of Mika and Morning Joe. <laughs> Yes, everybody, we're back with one of my most favorite parts of the show. What's brewing with my beautiful wife, Miss Mark Peter B. What you got brewing for us today, baby? Well, open for president 2020. Have you guys heard that uh, the people want her to run? Well, against Trump in 2020. Uh, I heard about that, and uh, it kind of made me scratch my head a little bit. <laughs> well, the first reason is because um, if Oprah's making a great speech... Um, at an award show um, um, st means that she needs to run for president. I think that that's a sad commentary for America. Mm -hmm. um, Oprah is a very successful woman. We're actually going to be talking about her a little later in the show. Right. Um, she's a very successful woman. However, I think that she's successful in her lane. Okay. And oftentimes when people are successful at one thing, um, sometimes people like to cross you over and say, well, if you're successful at this, you can be su successful at that. And I think that she's doing what she's supposed to be doing. She's reaching the people that she's supposed to be reaching. I think that she spoke to women. She spoke from her heart. But as the president, mm, I don't know. Well, the poll was conducted and they showed that if she would run, she would beat Trump by 10 points. If I run, I would beat Trump by 10 points. Anybody run, they'd beat you know Trump what I'm saying? <laughs> Trump, is, <laughs> Trump is the epitome of everything we don't want. They crack it up in the studio. <laughs> everything that we don't want as a president. And I think that he sold a bill of goods to a group of people who felt like they were overlooked. You know, he talked about bringing the coal mines back. We, what do we use coal for now? No. Like, and everybody was excited about the coal mine jobs coming back and all of that. We don't even use that stuff anymore. But exactly. they were excited because they want to, they would rather go back to the 50s right. than to see life progress right. you know but sometimes when people don't know any better they can't do any better That's so true. We just hoping that America wakes up and that the next president that we choose is somebody that's for everybody, everybody. and that we stop playing these games and move towards where America needs to go. Amen. That's all you got for us? You look that. mighty good to me today. Well, thank you. Jesus Christ. Well, folks, we are back. Elijah Breakfast, Coffee House Brew on Power and Praise Radio.com. And I'm here with my beautiful co host, Miss Marquita. B, yes. baby, how you feeling today? I'm feeling good. How about you? I'm feeling real good, especially since I'm sitting beside you. Oh, thank you. You look so good to me. Well, thank you. You look like a delicious plum. Well, don't eat the plum right now. Jesus <laughs> is worthy of all the praise. Good God Almighty. Listen today, folks, we're not going to hold you any longer. We're going to talk about uh, what you came to listen to tonight. Oprah's top 10 rules for success. For success. And I know we're just entering in, into... 2018 right. and everybody's talking about entrepreneurship and yep. everybody's talking about walking in your purpose and walking in what God has destined and assigned you to do and tonight we're going to dive into that and, and and hear from somebody who has been there done that and has the receipts like the women love to say she has the receipts to prove it that's right the Oprah Winfrey <laughs> show she has um the own network oh, yeah. uh, she she has many shows on that all the movies that she's been in the color purple beloved um you 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 name it, she's done it all. And so Oprah is like the perfect blueprint for success. And so when I was thinking about going into 2018, I couldn't think of anybody else better than to um, get advice from than Miss Oprah Winfrey. Yeah. And so I asked you, I said, well, can we talk tonight about Oprah Winfrey? And what did you say? Yes. You said yes. Yeah. I like to hear that. <laughs> say it again. Yes. yes. Oh, good God Almighty. <laughs> all right. So listen, we're going into Oprah's top 10 rules for success. success. Rule number one, Oprah says, understand what your next move is. And what she means by that is she said that you have to get still so that you can be clear about what the next move in your life is. And when I thought about that, I thought about a verse in the scripture where it says, be anxious for nothing, but everything by prayer and supplication, make your request known unto God. And oftentimes we get so anxious and I want to do it. I want to make it. I want to be successful. I want to be there until we don't take the time to just sit still and hear what God has to say about where we need to go next. Like, you know, uh, from a personal standpoint, I feel like it's always important for you to just think about what you want to do first. Pray about what you want to do first and then listen for God to give you the answer. Yeah, Let's do two, it. Seize your opportunity. Mm. Yes. 
seizing your opportunity. Oprah says the second thing that you need to do if you want to be successful is you have to seize every opportunity. opportunity. Don't, let one pass you by. Don't let one pass you by. And so many people say this thing about, oh, I got lucky. Right. I don't believe in luck. Luck is simply um, preparation meeting the moment of, of opportunity. So when you prepare yourself, then God sets situations and, um, and circumstances in your way so that you will be met with an opportunity. Right. And because you've, you have, you have prepared yourself, you are able to walk into that door and walk into that door with confidence. When I, when, um, when I saw this, I was thinking about, remember that morning when we woke up in the woodpecker? and the woodpecker was on the back of our home. Yeah. And so we're sitting there and we, we actually thought somebody was knocking on the door. Right. So, um, went to the door, nobody was at the door, but then we still heard this knocking. Well, I did a little bit of research once I found out that it was a woodpecker, and I found out that woodpeckers, they knock on your wood when they might hear beetles or something that's inside of the wood, right? So they hear something, so they begin to knock so that they can get to the um, beetles. Right. Well, what that says to me is those beetles, they represent opportunity. Mm -hmm. And many times, opportunity is knocking on the door of many of our homes, but we're not able to answer opportunity because we're not prepared. Right. The the reason that that woodpecker was knocking on the side of the house was because it heard something. It heard opportunity. It, right. it, 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 it heard a purpose. It heard a destiny. And so opportunity is knocking on many of our doors, but we don't take the, 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 we don't take the opportunity to right. prepare ourselves to um be ready. I'm, I'm a songwriter, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So if I don't, prepare myself by copywriting my material if somebody comes and says that they want to record one of my songs I'm not ready right. because my material hasn't been copyrighted right. and so if they use it and it's not copyrighted ain't nothing I can do about it right. because it's not copyrighted you see what I'm saying yeah. so I'm preparing myself for every opportunity that, that that comes my my way no one can call me and say I want to book your group and I don't have a contract ready. Mm -hmm. No, there, there should be a contract ready. When you call and I can say, okay, well, this is in the ballpark of what we do. Yeah. So you have to meet opportunity. I've been talking a whole lot. What do you think about opportunity? I'm, agree I'm agreeing with what you're saying. You're agreeing with what I'm saying. I like that. Well, cool. All right. <laughs> Number three, Oprah says, Everyone makes mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes. And this is where I had to grow. Okay. Okay, I had to grow as a person because I'm an individual. I am a perfectionist, mm -hmm, and much. what I have learned. <laughs> very much so. I am. Very much so. Serious. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> what I had to learn was there is no such thing as perfection. Right. There is trying to pertain to attain perfection. And it's okay to fail. And it's okay to fail. Mm -hmm. So everyone is going to make a mistake. But I, but I was so hard on myself that if I missed the mark or something didn't go exactly the way that I thought it should go, I would be mad and be mad for weeks at a time and don't want to speak to anybody, not speaking to y'all, not speaking to the kids, not speaking to nobody because I'm mad at the world because things didn't go my way because I'm a perfectionist. Right. And what I realized, I had somebody that gave me some wisdom. And this person said to me that perfectionists stay broke. And you know why? Because when you are a perfectionist and you're waiting for everything to be right mm -hmm. and for and for the and for the situation to be optimum, you will find yourself not moving forward because you are waiting on everything to be perfect. So you're stagnant. Stagnant, missing out on opportunities because you don't have it all together. We don't have it all together, That's but true. we took a leap of faith and started doing this show. Right. And we're learning in the process. And I remember the first show, I was talking all over my time, mm -hmm. probably like I'm doing right now. Yeah. But <laughs> at the end of the day, it's a learning process. And yeah. through that learning process, you grow you and grow. you get better. Yep. Right? And better, people gravitate to people who are in a growing process because everyone, at the end of the day, nobody's perfect. That's true. You feel me? Feel all right, let's go to number four. <laughs> Work on yourself. All right, talk about that for me. Well, me as a person, I'm mm -hmm. always constantly trying to work on myself, trying to see what I can do to be a better version of myself. What did you say, girl? I'm trying to be a better version of myself. A better version of yourself? Yes. What you talking about? You must always pray and ask God to show you your true identity, who you really true, truly made to be. So you mean you, it's, you it's can be... It's like everybody else. So you mean you can be somebody else that you wasn't destined to be? Yeah. Wow. Okay. So it's people out there right now that's operating in somebody else's purpose. That's true. When they should be being who they're supposed to be. Right. When they should be glad or um, what's the word I'm looking for? 
Content. Content. There you go. Content with who God called and created you to be. Instead wow. of trying to be like somebody else. So you know, you see somebody like, oh, I want their life. Or right. Their marriage. Right. But you don't know exactly what they had to go through. Right. In order to get to that place. <laughs> Absolutely. You don't know what that individual had to go, to go through to be who they are. And one thing I want to add to that is you want to make sure that you that your cup stays full. There's a song that I have that's called Overflow that, that, that everybody's really been talking about this week. Yeah. But there's a song that I wrote called Overflow. And in that song, it, it says that he anoints my head with oil right. and my cup right. runs Ooh. over. You ought to have, you ought to be so full. You know, sometimes people say you're so full of yourself. Right. And, 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 and you should be. And you should be full of yourself. Right. There's no reason why you shouldn't be full of yourself. You should be full of everything that God has called and predestined and assigned you to be. And if you're not full of your, if, you, if you're not full of yourself, you then evidently full of you're full of somebody else. That's right. Come on, somebody. Come on. So you have to walk in your overflow and be who God has called and assigned you to be. Number five, before we go to break, talk to me. Run as hard as you can. Run as hard as you can. Yep. Listen, you cannot win a race by looking back yep, you got at that. the other person. Yep. If you look back at the other person, you have to take energy to look back while still trying to run. And if if you're losing energy while you're running your race, run it, worrying about somebody else, they're going to bypass you. Mm -hmm. And you're going to find yourself stagnant because you're looking back. That's what right. did you think about that, about looking back? I agree. You agree. I feel like you should always uh, move forward, look forward. Uh -huh. Like I say, always have tunnel vision. You can't look to the left or to the right. Uh -huh. You got to stay focused on what God has for you. Right. So you got to keep on running that race. I always tell people... You know, we always talk about sin, and when we say sin, you know, we like, you know, the first thing we think about is, you know, uh, cursing, or lying, or cheating, or fornication, or whatever. Sin is a product of broken focus. That's true. Sin is a product of, of broken focus. Whenever you are not focused on what you called and destined and assigned to uh, do, that's when you get distracted and start mm -hmm. doing other things. So it, so it might not be cursing, or it might not be uh, fornicating, or it might not be cheating. It just might be that you operating in somebody else's reality. Reality. That's true. You know, that's sin. Operating in somebody else's reality instead of doing what God has called, purpose, destined, and assigned you to do. You feel me? Feel All right, it. folks, we are back talking about Oprah's top 10 rules for success. success. And uh, we're talking about this because we know it's 2018, it's January, and everybody's making um, goals and everybody's trying to be successful. Mm -hmm. Talking about entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. And so we want to be a part of that conversation. Yes. You know, we have um, things that we're reaching for in our home. Yeah. And in our business and things that we're trying to do. So we want to um, in, in, infect those that are connected to us with that same thing. That's right. All right. That's right. So we're on number six. Number six is my favorite. Mine too. My I love it. favorite, favorite, favorite. Yes. I live by this. But it says that in order for you to be successful, Oprah says you must believe. believe. You, must believe. you must believe. And, um, you, you know, she, she talks about not letting what other people think dictate how you believe about the purpose and destiny that's been placed on the inside of you. That is true. What do you say about that? I say the same thing. For example, I was talking to my husband about this earlier. Um, when I was younger, <laughs> I had someone say to me they thought that I was going to be a receptionist mm. in the office because I always like looking in the mirror and looking pretty and stuff. So they were, they, they thought I'll be sitting behind the desk uh, greeting folk. But wow. I have bigger dreams than that. Right. So if I would have believed that, then I would have ended up behind the desk being a receptionist wow. just because that's what they wanted for my life. Wow. Amen. And my wife, she is a genius. When I say she is a genius, she is a genius. And, you know, many times I would look at her and I would say, you know, you don't realize the potential that lies on the inside of you. And, you know, sometimes when when, when people put stuff in your head over and over and over and over and you over, tend you it. tend to believe it. Yep. But, but, but I always tell people, you have to get in the Word and find out what God says about you. Right. Yes, you'll be Beautiful. Yes, you love makeup, and yes, you a girly girl, but you also want to go into business, and yes. you also a strong woman, and yes. you also all, all of that. But people, got, what did you say to you? But people have the tendency to box you in yeah. and place you where they would like to have you. And and this word believe, I have a little thing that goes with it that um, says, because Emmanuel lives, I have victory every time. Go ahead. Believe. All right. Because Emmanuel lives, I have victory every time. I always tell people that um, if you believe you can't make it, you are absolutely correct. That's true. You cannot make it. 
Can't nobody help you make it. That's true. Whether you believe you can't make it because you're too black, or if you say you're too fat, or you don't sing good, or whatever the reason is you say you can't make it, you're absolutely correct. You won't make you it. You can't make it. Yep. But on the other hand, if you believe that you can make it, can't nobody stop you, no matter what they do. They'll close that door, and then God will open up another window. Come on, somebody. You can't beat God giving and, and taking you into the place that he has predestined and assigned for you. Going back to what we were saying earlier about running your own race. Mm -hmm. You can't look at what somebody else is doing and say, oh, well, they're doing it. Right, so I can do it too. Listen, you, you know how many people have radio shows? Mm -hmm. How many people have talk shows? Mm -hmm. But nobody can do the show that we're doing. Yep. Or nobody can do the show that somebody else is doing. You right. have to do what God has purposed and assigned you to do and believe in what he's placed inside of you. And this is what the Lord put in my spirit the other day. I was thinking about something like that. He's, I said, what God has for me, is for me. Come on now. And what God has for somebody else, it ain't for me. There you go. You know what I'm saying? That's there you go. The there you go. Yeah. What God has for you is for you. And that, that helps you. That keeps you from being jealous of people. Yeah. That keeps you from hating on people. Listen, we've learned now to start celebrating people right. when they're walking in their purpose and doing what God has called them to do. Celebrate them. Right. All right, let's move. let's move. Number seven. We are all seeking the same thing. Listen, she what, what she was saying was everybody at the end of the day is seeking the same thing. Everybody wants to be the vet, the best right. version of, of themselves. Yep. And you know what this made me think about? Um, Pastor Smith, um, Sammy C. Smith, he used to say something in church a long time ago. He used to say, when you can understand a person, mm -hmm. you'll be able to stand them. Right. This made me think about compassion. Right. Because so many people, they are upset or they say negative things when um, you or I or anybody else who's going after their dreams or trying to reach their dreams, these people have negative things to say. And I used to get angry about it, but what I've learned to do is have compassion on okay. people like that. Right. Because what happens is they see you reaching for your goals and it reminds them that well, they're still in the same place they were 20 years ago. Right. And so because they're still in that same place, then they want to bring negativity to what you bring. Right. But on the flip side of that, it also makes me celebrate other people right. when they are striving to do what they are called to do. Amen. If somebody reaches Billboard, I don't need to be jealous of them. I need to celebrate them. Right. If somebody um radio show is, is, is going further than where mine is going, I need to celebrate them right. because in my celebrating them, I'm sowing a seed right. by sowing that seed of celebration. And what happens is God's going to put me in a situation where there's going to be some folks that's going to celebrate me. Mm -hmm. But if I ever find myself hating on somebody for, for the thing that God has done in them, mm -hmm. then folks going to continually hate, hate on, on me. me. And mm -hmm. I'm going to stay in the same cycle, in the same place where I was 20 years ago with those all other right. folks. So I like that about um, we're all seeking the, the same, same thing. thing. All right. Number eight. Find your purpose. Watch this. Find your purpose. Talk about purpose. I got a group named Purpose Driven. You ever heard of them? Yep. Okay. All right. So listen. So back in the day, um, even even my group's name, it, it came from when um, when um, Pastor Smith, purpose -driven life. Sammy C. Smith was teaching a book um, on the Purpose Driven Life. And right. ever since then, that thing about purpose has been in everybody's life. And everybody needs to be purpose driven. What is your purpose? There's a guy named Simon Sinek. Okay. Um, that I listen to quite often, and 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 his thing is understanding your why. Okay. You know, many people go through life and they don't understand their why. If you say that God has called you to preach, why? Why? What's the reason? What's the reason? Mm -hmm. If you saying that God is called God calling me to be a prophet or God is calling me to be a bishop or whatever, why? Is mm -hmm. it so that you could have a nice car or a nice house or is it so that you could wear the robes and all that kind of stuff and your chain? And your, I mean, what is the reason why you're doing what you're doing? And I think that when people understand their why, you won't be misplaced. That's true. Because there's so many people that are on jobs, yep. that are operating in businesses, right. that are connected to people that have absolutely nothing to do with their why. But they don't know that because they're still wrapped up in cluelessness. Right. They don't have a clue as to what they should be doing. be doing. There you go. Yep. All right. Let's go to number nine. Stay grounded. Stay grounded. Mm -hmm. What you want to say? Always seek to come from a centered place. Come from a centered place. Now, when the church people hear that, they're going to flip their wigs. Because oh, yeah. when you say stuff like centered place, they'll think about new age and all that kind of right. stuff. Change. But But listen, but you have to be grounded. You have to find yourself in a place where you're coming from a place of peace. Right. You know, because when you can find peace within yourself, it helps you to um, exuberate 
peace in the world. All right, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And by you pushing that peace out into the world, it's called the law of sowing and reaping. You reap whatever you sow. So when you come up from a place of groundedness and you put peace out, out into the world, That's that peace has to come back right. to you. And it, and, and, and it allows you to be centered and it allows people to see themselves in, in you. you. You know, whenever I get up to sing or whenever I get up to speak, mm -hmm. My main goal is so that people can see themselves in me. Even this radio show, right. you know, um, there there will be women that can identify with you yeah. because they'll be able to see themselves in you. Exactly. There will be men that will be able to identify with me because they'll be able to see themselves in me. Right. You know, and the more we do the show and the more they learn about us, um, they'll begin to hear things and see things that identify within them and they can identify with it. That's why Oprah was so successful with her show. It wasn't the fact that, um, that, that it was, I mean, it was a great show but people were able to identify, identify. people from all walks of life were able to identify with what she had to offer yeah. let's go to number 10 relax it's going to be okay relax it's going to be okay yes. um you know once again bible says be anxious for, for nothing. nothing i was looking at um a young lady's live earlier today and she was talking about the fact that sometimes we get in a hurry and we get upset because Things are not happening the way really that thought so. we thought it should happen. Yeah. And she talked about the fact that how sometimes God protects us. Oh, yeah. You know, sometimes, you know, I'm a person that's in music and you want to be on the big stage with the lights and all that. But sometimes God is trying to protect you because he know a month from now you might go through something that he don't want anybody to know. Right. But but because you're so busy wanting to be on the big stage with the state with, with the big lights and everything with your name in um, lights, you force yourself to be out before your time. No it's like a cake. Mm -hmm. It's like a cake. If you take that cake out before it's finished, it's going to drop. Yeah, sure. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You got to make sure that you baked all the way all right. before you are placed out before the people. So right. relax, take a chill pill, and, and, wait. There, and wait. There's a mm -hmm. song by my favorite artist. Everybody will know. Everybody don't know. But everybody who know me know her. <laughs> a lady named Dorothy Love Coates. Oh, yeah. From Birmingham, Alabama. Dorothy Love Coach used to sing a song that says, You can't hurry God. That's right. You just have to wait. Just have you got to gotta trust him and give him time no matter how long it takes. He's a God you just can't hurry, but he'll be there. He'll be there. Don't worry. <laughs> he may not come when you want him. But he's right on time. But he's right on time. Amen. That's dot love. Y'all know about that song. But you can't hurry God. And it's just simply saying that you have to wait on God. Allow God to open the door. Listen, when God opens the door for you, he's the only one that can close it. Amen. If you allow people to open Now, he'll use people to open it. But if you manipulate people to get your door open, think it's your money's going to do it or whatever. If you manipulate people, those same people can close the door on you. But if God open it, they can't close it unless God give them the okay. All right. I enjoyed talking with you I today. I enjoyed it too. You still look like a beautiful plum. Well, thank you. I'm feeling myself over here. I'm going to need you to calm down. I got a pretty wife, though. <laughs> and I can't help myself. Amy. All right, folks. This has been Elijah Bradford's Coffee House Brew. We've had a great time with you today. Join us next week. Same time, same place. 6 p.m. PowerandPraiseRadio.com.